standing papers, Monsieur, for Cap Francois. Nope. If you take my advice, you'll get your business done quick and get back to the ship. I don't want to be quick. I come from Baltimore. Baltimore can be mighty dull. Maybe. But I sure hate to lose a paying passenger. Consul? Yes. Go right on down the sugar dock. You'll find the longboat there. They'll take you out the ship. Tell them I sent you. Ship? I don't want a ship. I just got off one. I told them not to let anyone come ashore after they were... Say, who are you? Alvin Hamlin, sir. From Baltimore, Maryland. I just got off of the packet from Charleston. Well, get right back on again uh -huh. if you can. What's the matter? The law firm I represent has commissioned me to get a signature on a legal document. Which is a Mr. Mr. Hamlin, this is no time for signatures or legal documents. The last boat for the ship will leave in an hour. You didn't let I... me finish, sir. This matter concerns the United States government. I'm the United States government here, sir. And it is my duty to see that every American gets off this island. Uh, take that one. May I ask why? Mr. Hamlin, this is the island of Haiti, formerly French. Napoleon wants it back. He has a fleet on its way here now to take it back. When that fleet arrives, there will be violent, bloody war. Is that clear? Quite, sir. But doesn't this concern only the natives? It concerns everyone on this island. Now, if you'll go on to the dock, I'll finish closing this consulate. But we're not at war with France. And I didn't think it was customary the American consulate it to go... It is also not customary to sit on a powder keg and wait for it to blow up. I'm removing the consulate to an American gunboat in the harbor. When things have quieted down, we'll move back. Now, are there any further questions? Yes. Where may I find a Miss Lydia Bailey? Lydia Bailey? Why? It's her signature I'm after. May I ask why? To clear up her father's estate, which was willed to the United States government. Hmm. Well, can't the government wait? It might. But we have troops on the frontier which haven't been clothed nor paid for the past three months. Now, I understand Miss Bailey is the ward of a Colonel Dotremo. Ward, I suppose she was. She's his fiance now. Will they be leaving the island too? Dotremont, amongst other things, he's the largest French landowner in Haiti. You couldn't get him off. He's a white was... man. Is he safe? Mr. Hamlin, if you insist on staying here, I would stake what small fortune I have that within an hour you will have had your head broken. I've come a long way, sir, to do a job. I intend to do it. 
Oh, very well. If Colonel Dautremont is in town, you may find Miss Bailey at 22 Rue Napoleon. 22 Rue Napoleon? Yes. Thank you, sir. And will you wish me luck, sir? If I thought it'd do any good, I'd tell you that the gunboat would be lying off the island, but I'd just be wasting my breath. <laughs> I can swim like a fish. Good day, sir. That one's ready over there. Follow us, you. Follow us, you. Follow us, you. As I thought, you remember me. Do I? Certainement. From America. Uh, what brought you here? A ship. <laughs> Always a chest, I remember. Will you join me for a drink, monsieur? Oh, sorry. Not right now. You look for someone, monsieur. I'm a little porter. Is this the Dottermo house? Oui. Is Miss Lydia Bailey at home? No, elle est partie. Lydia Bailey n'habite plus ici. Where, uh, who is tell? Where is she now? Château. Where? Château Dottermont. Gabriel Dottermont. Where is the Château Dottermont? Dottermont. My dear Mr. Hamlin, relax and consider yourself my guest. My name is King Dick. Be good enough to sit down, sir. I stand, since I'm in the presence of royalty. Please sit. Your name is Elvin Hamlin, according to these papers which we have all read. I came to Haiti from the United States to see a certain Lydia Bailey. It's a private legal matter. It's none of your business. Do you know Lydia Bailey well? Your father. I never saw her in my life. She lives at the house of Monsieur Dautremont. And so I've heard. Dautremont conspires with Napoleon. Your Lydia Bailey shares his sympathies. Come, Mr. Hamlin. Your mission is not as innocent as it appears. You may confess to me. I don't know Dautremont from a hole in a fork maple. And as for Lydia Bailey, all she means to me is that she can write her own name, I hope. I want her signature on these papers and nothing more. Haiti is not Baltimore, Mr. Hamlin. Dautremont Chateau is not just around the corner. Leave this place on your own, and in 24 hours, our fine Haitian flesh-eating ants will be gorging themselves on your eyes. Uh, which reminds me, I'm quite hungry. Come, let us eat. 
Then I will decide what to do with you. Dr. Amour's chateau is two days' travel through the wildest part of Haiti. It's Mirabeau's country. Mirabeau and his renegade blacks, we call them maroons, take great pleasure in finding white gazelles like you. See how much torture they can take before giving up the ghost. Some more, please? No, thank you. I'll take my chances. You are not interested. Not interested? When I landed, I was only interested in getting a simple job done. Within half an hour, I was partly responsible for the death of a child. I've been kidnapped, searched, threatened, and beaten on the head with that. Not beaten, my friend. Merely caressed. You underestimate the power of a good coca macaque. Matter of fact, I think you underestimate it a little yourself. Well, I'll see that you get back to Cap Francois safely and on board an American ship. As for those papers, they're not worth getting killed for. How are they? I'll decide that. As an American citizen. Be quiet, sir. A new thought comes to me, Mr. Hamblin. I will help you get to Dotoromo Chateau in safety on one condition. Yes. That you consider me your personal servant and introduce me into the Dotoromo household as such. Do I have a choice? No, unfortunately. And I shall be your most devoted servant. All right. It's a bargain. Let's get on with it. Yes, sir. Mes femmes, mes femmes! This is Amethyst. She's the best cook in the world. This is Wazid. All of her children are sons. This is Mamlin. She can speak 12 languages. Very intellectual. This is Artiner, who... Uh, very talented girl, Artiner. This is Florel. No, uh, Clercine. She's a mambu, a voodoo priestess. I don't believe in it at all. Ah, Floreal. She makes all my clothes. Her ancestors were kings in Africa. And you are... Uh, Aspidel. Aspidel. You are new here. Aspidel. And this is old Chlorophyll. We've been married a long, long time. She's not the prettiest. But I have no secrets from her. Tell me, King Dick, don't you find that eight wives are a bit too many? One is too many. Two are tolerable. But with eight, a man can always be sure of retaining his freedom. <laughs> Ladies, I'm taking Mr. Hamlet with me on a journey into Mirabeau country. Prepare him. I'll be back in a minute. What are they going to do? <laughs> Undress you. Oh, no! Here, get me some old clothes. Prepare two horses. Now, ladies, please, I'm from Baltimore. Glory, Ben. Here, put it on good and thick. Well, just a minute, King Dick. If there's anything to put on, I can put it on myself. We have no time to lose. Sixteen hands are better than two. Please! Please, please! <laughs> Good, very good. All over? All over. Did they give you a pouch of the stain powder to carry? Now, when you sweat, don't wipe your face. It'll undress you. 
Just remember, if we're caught by the Maroons, it's my skin as well as yours. Uh, Pierre, give me your knife. Do you have your papers? Now, listen carefully. You're to be a field mulatto. Now, I would make you a general, but generals get asked questions. If anyone questions you, you're to act as if you have a snake in your head. A snake in my head? <laughs> People suspect a clever man. They trust the stupid ones. Now, you're to ride your horse a little ways behind me at all times. I thought you were to be the servant. When and if we get to Dotromores, I will pretend to be uncouth, illiterate, and obedient. Until then, as Plato says, true courage is to obey the wise men. Yes. Yeah. Well, shall we mount Plato? For the boy, ladies. Corifane, as usual, will be in charge. somewhat responsible for you. So here, if anything should go wrong and we're separated, this may keep you from harm. Put it around your neck. What is it? A very powerful wonka. A hungan priest gave it to me. Not that I believe in voodoo, you understand. Of course not. You're an educated man. Naturally. But if the gods exist, I shall be in heaven. If not, what do I lose? Besides, I've got a better wonga right here. Of this one, I am sure. Thank you, King Dick. Call me Dick. It's true, my ancestors were kings in Africa. But it's more important these days that one remembers he was once a slave. I don't like the smell of this. It could be Mirabeau and his maroons. You talk about freedom, yet it seems no one's safe in your country, regardless of his color. The renegade Mirabeau doesn't like whites, but he also doesn't like blacks who like whites. Saved his life once. A great mistake. Give the signal. Whatever you do, don't move, don't say a word. If you have to separate, keep due north to the chateau. General Mirabeau. field hand here has a snake in his head. I'm sure you have not forgotten I once saved your life. 
When I stood up to Toussaint and said that we must kill all the whites before the French fleet arrives, you voted against me. You're Toussaint's lapdog. You're disloyal to our people. That servant of yours was a white. Perhaps saving my life was not enough. Come. I said get back to work. Alvin Hamlin, Baltimore, Maryland. What are you doing masquerading as a field hand? I'm looking for the Dotremont plantation. You found it. Could you tell me where I could find Miss Lydia Bailey? I'm Lydia Bailey. What do you want? I have a message for you. I've come a long way. What's the message? <laughs> Could you give me time to catch my breath? I'm here on behalf of your father's estate. I'm not interested. That's neither here nor there. You could at least have the courtesy to hear a man out. Caesar. Show this white man of the chateau. After you've bathed and changed your clothes, you may deliver your message. under the shoulder. <laughs> but then why should it fit at all? You see, Daughtry more prefer him that way for sword play, sir. <laughs> In that case, I shouldn't want to trifle with him. Had you planned to, monsieur? Gabriel Dautremont, at your service, monsieur, any time. <laughs> Misunderstand me, monsieur. It's merely a turn of a phrase. We Americans, we... I'm Albion Hamlin, the Baltimore Maryland. Oh, American. You must forgive me, monsieur. I was told that you came to us in rags and with your face blackened. Times are unsettled, Mr. Hamlin. So I found. It was a device suggested by my servant to get past this Mirabeau. Servant? We were ambushed. I escaped, but he was taken. A pity. Mirabeau is a violent man. Now, uh, about this coat. I haven't had a chance to thank you. It's an amazing fit. But loose under the shoulder. Allow me. This should fit you better. It's beautiful. Now, uh, if you'll forgive me, may I know the nature of your visit? I came to see Miss Lydia Bailey. I understand that. Why? It's a legal matter between Miss Bailey and me. I'm accustomed to handling all legal matters for her. Are you her husband? I do not resent your question nearly as much as your tone, sir. Would you care to explain? Again, I must apologize for my manner, monsieur. 
I need her signature on a document. Unless you were her husband, you cannot sign for her. We are not yet married. And I'm afraid I must press the matter with Miss Bailey. You are amazingly persistent, Mr. Havlin. Even for an American. And I find myself amazingly rude for a host. You had the courage to come to Mirabeau's territory and... Uh, come. You shall see her. My mother, Mr. Hamlin. Please, madame. It is a pleasure to see an American these days. I have never forgotten how entrancing was your ambassador, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I've been told he was a great favorite with the ladies. You've met Mademoiselle Bailey. I wish I had half Mr. Franklin's charm. Or perhaps his subtlety. And this is my son, Paul. His mother died at his birth. Lily has cared for him since. Hello, Paul. Hello. We have a saying of our own here, Mr. Hamlin. To give all to one son is to be given paradise in return. You see, I have no fear of the future. You have had enough dancing for today, huh? Yes, Papa. Please excuse me. And now, my dear Lydia, our guest insists on talking to you in private. Perhaps you would care to use my study. I know Mr. Hamlin's business. He can speak of it here. Miss Bailey, I... Mr. Hamlin, in the past two years, I've received countless letters from my father's lawyers. I've not answered them because I won't sign any papers. I disapproved of my father and his will. I've not changed my mind. One moment, Miss Bailey. My interest in this is not just that of a lawyer. I was a back-of-the-trees Yankee. Came out of a Cumberland settlement, poor as a church mouse. Your father was the first man to help me. He paid for a year's schooling. When I wanted a chance to study at the law, he made arrangements for me to work for his lawyers. I respected him, and I loved him. And now that he's dead, I'm here to see that his wishes are carried out. You obviously have more reason to be grateful than I. It's not a question of your wishes or mine. Your father left his estate to his government. It's still a poor government. It needs his land and great wealth. Do you know that our soldiers haven't been paid in over three months? That President Jefferson... I'm not interested in adding to the wealth of your Mr. Thomas Jefferson or his government. Your government? Not mine, Mr. Hamlin. If you can't be loyal to your country, what about your own father? My father was a bigot. He divorced my mother and sent us to France when I was a child. I was educated there. It's my country. I no longer consider myself an American or my father's daughter. I rather like my sister, Lydia, dear. Why cause him and this young man all this trouble? Sign the papers and have done with it. Do not scold Lydia, dear maman. Who then shall I scold? You? Perhaps you'd better see what goes on, Gabrielle. Excuse me. You'll excuse me, madame, if I speak bluntly to a lapsed American. I am an old lady. I do not have much time left for anything else but bluntness. My dear Miss Bailey, you're an American whether you admit it or not. You have a chance to help your country, but you refuse out of a petty spite. If I had you within gunshot of Baltimore, I'd turn you over my lap and thwack you from here to Christmas. Incredible. You know, there's some women, noble women, too, who might find a man of your temperament attractive. I, however, do not admire violence or bad taste. I all right, sir. Nice dog. Nice dog. Nice dog. This man is my servant. Ah. Oh. How did you escape Mirabeau? Me? My goodness. Mirabeau, big boobity general. Me, big boobity nothing. He kick my in and say, fly away. I fly. Hmm. I see. Haven't I seen you in Cap Francois? Me, sir? Oh, yes. I go every place. You know me, sir? No. Who are your friends there? Oh, one friend make one enemy. Five friend, five enemy. Me, my goodness. I love only me. Out of the mouths of babes and fools. Give him food and clothing. <laughs> Where 
did you get him on the docks? Looks more like a field hand or a soldier. He told me he was a guide. And he got me here. Yes. No mean feat either to Omiabo's country. Do you think he misrepresents himself? <laughs> you think us a suspicious lot. I'm sorry, Mr. Hamlin. But the times, you know. We can't be sure of anyone's loyalty. I'm afraid I must abuse my privilege as host again to ask you that you be responsible for this man while he's here. I'll be happy to assume that responsibility. Thank you. Ah, do you hear that? A big hunger is visiting my blacks, a voodoo priest. They'll show up for us tonight. Very interesting. Or does anything excite an American? Something might. I'd say it depends. But it's of no consequence, my dear Maman. They're always calling on one god or another. Do not underestimate them, Gabriel. When they danced to the war god ten years ago... Things are quite different now. Toussaint won't have his way with us. Or they will be restored. <laughs> Whatever threat you think is being danced, my dear Maman, cannot possibly materialize. Now, if you'll excuse me. Lydia, I beg of you, take Paul and go before it is too late. Antoinette, you know Gabrielle would not let any harm come to us. He will not be able to prevent it. I'm weary. Bad way. Marie, put your child to bed. Good night, dear. Good night, madame. Perhaps she knows what she's talking about. Mr. Hamlin, there's nothing that keeps you here. 
Who is that? No. Nothing but your signature. Where's General Aprim? In there. He seems frightened. He wants his money and he wants to leave. By the way, why wasn't I informed about Mr. Hamlin, the American who arrived recently in Cap Francois? Due to some accident, monsieur. Be more efficient next time. I wish to be informed about everything. Monsieur, don't remove. General Aprim, I'm glad to see you. Monsieur Miller tells me that you desire to leave immediately. It is no reflection on your hospitality, sir. But I do not feel comfortable here. Comprehend? Very well. Now, what arrangements have you made to hand over the ports to General Leclerc? Here is where I will withdraw my troops. The port batteries will not be manned. You can count on it. Planned very well. Come to river, where soleil mourit. at the end of this path. Thank you, sir. I have your respect, sir, have I not? Naturally. about those papers of yours. Yes? Despite the way I feel about your America, I will sign them. On one condition. All right. What are your terms? Two years ago, a young couple were to be married. The man got in trouble and ran away to your country. But his sweetheart's still here. I want them together again and happy. You take her to America with you? Is she a friend of yours? Yes. What does she need me for? Let her sell her jewels and her slaves. She's my servant, Murray. There she is. Will you do it? You amaze me. I'm going to have to apologize for what I've been thinking of you. Monsieur Dalton must not know of this. He wouldn't understand. I do have possibilities. Will you take her? If you lived for a while among real people, you wouldn't know yourself. I'll agree with anything you say about me. If only you'll take her. Please, Mr. Hamlin. The girl's in love with this man. All right. I'll take her. the dogs. Let them get the smell of it. I'm not certain, of course, but it may be your servant. In that event, I'll join the search for him. By all means. As I told you in the beginning, I hold you responsible for his conduct.
ACC. Gabriel. The assassin has escaped. This changes my plans. I must leave immediately for Cap Francois. My dear Maman. Will it be safe here, Gabriel? The safest place in Haiti. I'm leaving enough guards. Your blessings. It is very hard for a mother to wish that the plans of her son should fail. But for yourself, at least, Gabriel, my blessings. Do you have to go, Papa? I'm doing this for your future, my dear son. And when I get back, I'll have French dragoons and hussars with me, and perhaps even a medal from Napoleon himself. Can I wear it? I'll pin it on you with my own hands. My dear Lydia. Please don't worry, Gabriel. As soon as Leclerc has the country safe, I'll send for you. Napoleon's sister and brother-in-law will be the witnesses at our wedding. Good luck, good luck, Papa. Thank you, Paul. Mama. One more thing. Your friend, the American. He's not my friend. Good. If he returns here, you ought to have him shut. He helped the assassin escape. But it's incredible. Perhaps, you know, Americans, they do things out of impulse without thinking. I'm convinced he's one of Toussaint's spies. The man he calls his servant is a general in the Black Army. That should be enough for you. My dear Lydia. Gabriel. Superior numbers, burn the village. But why? They were holding them. Two signs orders. Does he know what he's doing? Has he had any military experience? He's two sir. He knows. It wasn't much of a town anyway. Not worth making a stand for. No, not much. It was the place of my birth. I'm sorry. What? It's about Mirabeau and his maroons. Toussaint was afraid of a flanking attack. Mirabeau's only interested in burning and pillage. They're withdrawing to the south. The south? Those are Dotomo's lands. The chateau, he wouldn't touch that, would he? Dotomo's been paying them. Blood money. Where are you going? The chateau. Through Mirabeau's lines again? For what? A signature, that's what I came after. Not for the girl? Only as far as her signature's concerned. You think I'm mad? I serve in a mighty army of some 2,000 ragged slaves, opposing the conqueror of Europe. Who's to say who is mad, Mr. Hamlet? Do you have your die? And your wonga? I almost wish I could go with you, but... Here, take this. It may serve you better than I could. 
Luck to you and your army, King Dick. Same to you, Mr. Hamlet. Nurse is gone. They all go. But why? Where? Some to Toussaint's army. Some are afraid of Maribel. He will kill all, black or white. Nonsense. He wouldn't dare touch us. Go to the nursery. Paul's frightened. Back of them in here. Come back to help you get away. Mr. Hamlin. Where's Paul and Madame Dotremont? In their rooms? Bring the boy into the old lady's room. And hurry. Chance. We can't leave you here like this. You must come, Mama Antoinette. What can you do? Carry me a few miles. I would never survive in any case. I'm tired. I'm ready, ready to die. I'm going to die here in my own bed. Please, Mama Antoinette. Mr. Hamlin, take her. No. Your duty is to let you and the boy. This is no time for idiotic sentiment. Fine woman. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Grandma's right, Paul. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, Mama. Go, on you, Paul. You must be very brave. Is it a game? Yes, it's a game. But we must never stop playing it, even for a moment. You must think and act like a little colored boy. Do you know what they do? Oh, yes, you see. They have fun all the time. They go barefoot and eat sugar cane, but I'm not allowed. <laughs> They're coming this way. We'll have to go.
woman of Dothramon. Find her. A woman, a child, painted. Find him. Give me a piece of your belt. When did this happen? On the rocks when we crossed the stream. Why didn't you tell me? Could we have stopped there? No. All right. Refugees. I suspect from Cafasua. Apparently, they don't appreciate the good intentions of your French. We'd better get out of here. Well, surely, there's no danger from those poor wretches. If I were a native today whose liberty was threatened by Napoleon's cutthroats, I'd kill every white man I could lay hands on. Mi abo abini, pa este u, move pou fa. We may see. She says Mirabeau's close behind. He's coming this way. Let's stay with the refugees. No, please, I'm all right. I... They're looking for us, they'll be looking for a man and a woman, a child. Keep following with you, Marie. For how long? 
Better get out of here while we can. Do you think? Do you think you could find a way to cut Francois? Yes, I can do it. You can walk anymore? Yes, I'm all right. Let's go. We'll find a place to make camp. If we keep going west. We'll get there. I think. to the north, sir. Quick! Lydia. Lydia. We have the pass blocked here. A company of men here. The river stops them here. With two cannons, we can hold out forever. Well, you do not have two cannons, my friend. 
So we move here, then here. They not only hold, they've driven them back. To south! To south! To south! Well, my friend. Great news, sir. We'll stop the French in their tracks. Don't you understand? We'll stop them, sir. I understand. They have driven them back, sir. With 200 men, we can retake the town. Can't we? Absolutely. I have the men here. They've not been committed. Will you give the order to move them, sir? Or are you meant to fall back slowly and burn the town? Fall back? Burn another town? 200 men can win in Tucson. And how many would you lose? Oh, 40 or 50. What matter? This is a stronghold. 40, 50. Dead men will not rebuild our land after the French have gone. We need them, my friend. Fall back and burn the town. Fall back, fall back. The next thing will be in the mountain. The French will tire of mountain climbing before we do. And they will find nothing in our burned fields or cities. Thank you, King Dick. It will be a long time, but tongues can be rebuilt. Well? We found this, King Dick. Where? On a white man. Dead? Almost. Where is it? Over there. Give him every care. Save him if you can. He's a friend. Yes, sir. Ah, my dear Dr. you've heard the splendid news General Boudet has taken port au prince Yes, Your Excellency. Ailey Charles, must you always treat the capture of each of these stinking black villages as if you had accomplished another Marango? I am only your brother's humble servant, madame, but I feel sure Napoleon will be pleased with this news and with our excellent Dr. Your Excellency, madame, may I present Mademoiselle Lydia Bailey? So, this is the American beauty we have heard so much about. I've been simply dying of curiosity. I'm flattered to think Madame has heard of me. Heard of you? My dear old Cap Francois is buzzing with your escapade. Is it really true that you painted yourself black all over and uh, roamed the jungle with an American? Yes, Madame. Mr. Hamlin lost his life protecting me. He was very brave. Tell me, my dear, was he also very attractive? Very. <clears throat> uh, do you know that Toussaint has agreed to meet us? Here? Yes, when I heard he was hidden somewhere near the city, I passed the word I wished to see him tonight to discuss a settlement. May I inquire whether this means peace, Your Excellency? I admire women who take an interest in politics. Napoleon ordered me to divide the conquest of Haiti into three parts. First, to make a landing on the coast and to cultivate the friendship of Toussaint. This I have done. Second, to move inland, disarm the peasants, and avow my profound affection for Toussaint. This I have done also. Now only the third part remains to arrest Toussaint and send it to France. But under a flag of truce, Your Excellency, is that fair? <laughs> of course, women do not understand politics. Your Excellency, may I have your permission to dance with my fiancé? Of course you have our permission. As a matter of fact, we envy you.
really don't feel well. I'd like very much to leave. No, Pauline would consider that unforgivable. We must not forget she's Napoleon's sister. Could easily tell that she's not a born French woman. She's good enough for our daughter more, my dear. But the way she said, is that fair? One is not interested in fairness when it concerns a man whose father was a cannibal somewhere in Africa. Possibly. But from what I hear, Toussaint is one of the most extraordinary men of our times. Shall we dance? Citizen Toussaint, what is this offer of Leclerc's to make a settlement? Will he retire from Haiti, give up his master's dream of conquest? Will Napoleon be willing to acknowledge to the world that we, black men who were slaves but yesterday, have defeated him? Will Napoleon and this lackey of his confess that we have advanced our liberty beyond their wildest dreams? They will admit none of this. I say then, that his offer to talk with you was written in treachery. I say that the tongues of the white men are black with lies. I say to you, Toussaint, that the peace of these whites is the peace of death. White? Black? That is not like you, my friend. Have you forgotten that we have black enemies and white friends? If I may say a word. King Dick has vouched for you. Thank you. I'm a stranger in your land. When I came here three months ago, I had no knowledge of your cause. Nor, I must confess, was it the slightest concern of mine. And now, Mr. Hamlin? And now, I've spent time with your people. They nursed me back to health, a stranger in an alien land. I lived with them, talked with them, and fought with them. I know now what it is you're fighting for. And I realize that it's no different than what men in my country fought for. You're no longer a stranger, Mr. Hamlin. Please continue. I also have some knowledge of the French here, Monsieur Toussaint. They're treacherous and cynical. And I must agree with King Dick. If you go as Leclerc suggests, they'll kill you without so much as turning a hair. Granted, you may be right. And I'm not sure I agree. What would you do? Send an emissary in your place. <laughs> Impossible. Leclerc refuses to talk peace with anyone but me. And only through peace can we rebuild our country. If he kills me, well, he has killed one man. But there will be others to carry on. I cannot agree with you, sir. It is your spirit which moves the country and fills your people. Without you, they will weaken and scatter. Your cause will be lost. Let's make a vote on it. Yes, let's take a vote. Forgive me, forgive me. But I cannot be persuaded by your voices or your votes. And were you truly a stranger, Mr. Hamlin, I could believe you. But you know, as I and all the others, the spirit of freedom is not in a man, but in a people. I will go putting my faith in God. It is important that I see Citizen Toussaint at once. Mademoiselle, you are out of your mind. Citizen Toussaint is more than a hundred miles away. Please trust me. I know that he is here. The Vaudoon priest told me. Then you know more than I do. On your way. He's stubborner than one of your hard-headed Yankees. Yes. Now I know why you think of him as your George Washington. Mr. Hamlin! Marie! Ça va, ça va. Can you get me to Citizen Toussaint, monsieur? How is Mademoiselle Bailey? Is she safe? Yes, monsieur. What's this about Toussaint? I have a message for him. What is it? He will be betrayed, citizen. Leclerc will arrest him tonight. Get our horses. Now tell me all you know from the beginning. I was at the party. Mademoiselle Bailey overheard what they planned to do. Attention! The carriage of General Toussaint! Ah, 
Our distinguished visitor has arrived. Colonel, yes, sir. have the music stopped and inform all our guests they will bow and curtsy when he enters. For the moment, we will display all the outward signs of deference and respect. Leclerc, please identify yourself. My name is Albion Hamlin. I'm an American citizen. Here is a representative of His Excellency Toussaint Louverture. I know this man, Your Excellency. He's a renegade and the associate of a murderer. <laughs> Why, this must be the fabulous American who squired your lady through the jungle. <laughs> I believe our dear Dr. Moore is jealous. <laughs> Whoever you are, doesn't Toussaint understand my conditions? I will deal with him or no one. You may deal with him at his headquarters. What insolence! My brother Napoleon would either make you his minister of state or hang you. Either honor would be too great for me, madame. I've been authorized to speak in Toussaint's name. Then speak up. He asked me to tell you that he is eager to put a stop to this senseless war, brought on a people who want only to live in peace. If he stands in the way of peace, he's willing to surrender his power and place himself in your hands. On the following terms. We will hear the terms. That you withdraw your armies from the field. That you abandon the cities and that you set sail for France with all of your forces. If you accept, he'll go with you and plead his case before Napoleon. I accept nothing. The man is mad. How dare he presume to dictate to Napoleon? I warn you, sir. If you remain on this island, there'll be nothing for you but fire and death. You hear those drums? If I don't return with your acceptance in 10 minutes, this whole city will be so destroyed, no man will ever know where it once stood. You neither amuse nor frighten us. And suppose we return you dead. Your Excellency. The man is obviously a spy sent here by his government to aid Toussaint. That's not true. If it is not true, then how did you come to meet this Toussaint and cultivate this affection for him? I was on my way to Cap Francois with a woman and a child. We were separated and I was shot and left for dead. Toussaint's men found me and nursed me back to health. Sir, I beg you, you must believe him. Mademoiselle, I can't afford to take any chances. The whole story's too fantastic for words. Please, madame. To shoot him, Leclerc would spoil such a delightful triangle. We ask you not to. But, Pauline. We demand it. D'Autremont, is there an American ship in the harbor? Yes, Your Excellency. Send word to its captain to put a boat ashore. Keep this man under guard and see that he goes aboard. Yes, Your Excellency. Guard! Oh, please, Your Excellency, he'll never reach that ship alive. Control yourself, my dear. He is under the protection of Napoleon's sister. I must say I agree with you. He is very attractive. But Ramon, I make you personally responsible for his safety. Yes, Your Excellency. If you make any attempt to go to him or to communicate with him, I'll have him shot, despite Napoleon's sister. Password. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. That's not the password. I know, my friend, but it should be.
Long pass, eh? A few more minutes, General. Uh, there may be some. The Americans. The French have arrested him, sir. Shall I give the signal, sir? There is no other course. Yankee ship's anchored off the Sugar Wharf. They're expecting you. Well, I'm not going. Not without her. So that's how it is. That's how it is. Well, I won't argue with you. Someday you'll learn that eight are less trouble than one. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, will you help me? Again? I have no choice. You're my friend. Your lady's at Dotromo's townhouse. You know what that is. Yes. <laughs> Waiting at the sugar wall. Dick's waiting for us at the sugar doctor. He'll hold a boat until we get there. work to do here. Better hurry. The tide is turning. I feel like I were running away. You're but one man. You heard what Toussaint said of one man. Besides, you also have things to do. When it's all over, come and see us. I may need your advice. You come back to us. We won't have much, but we'll have our freedom. Goodbye, King Dick. Goodbye, Mr. Hamlet. Bye, man. 